so we're gathered for another sculpture forum um, and we're going to be talking about an exhibition of sculpture by Ruben Kaddish at the Eric Firestone Gallery and I am gathered with Jock Ireland and Brent Junso and we are also joined on this occasion by the wonderful distinguished critic, historian and curator Karen Wilkin. Thank you Karen. Thank you. And we're looking at a, uh, a video of the exhibition taken by Maud Britt. Thank you Maud. And we gathered in person uh, to do this. It's, I saw this show earlier and, and saw it again uh, yesterday when we gathered to look at it. Uh, it's a show of a lot of work in a fairly small space. Um, that, that is an acute understatement. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I, I, I was, I, you know, Robin Kaddish is a name I'm familiar with, but I was not particularly aware of the work. Um, and I, I guess, it, it, to my mind, I thought of him as a painter, but, but apparently he stopped painting and started making sculpture. Mm -hmm. At some point, I understand when uh, um, a studio with a lot of his paintings in it burnt down, and, uh, and uh, I guess he thought, um, I won't make any more of those, I'll make some things that won't burn so easily. Um, <laughs> and he made a lot of them. And he, well, he, he made a lot of very tiny mm -hmm. uh, little object sculptures um, that apparently he made while, while he was supposedly teaching. Um, uh, and I forget where that was, at Hunter or somewhere, where Cooper. evidently, Cooper, Cooper, where obviously they had a, um, a fairly small kiln and he was able to make these things in wax and and cast them himself. Um, and there, there are a lot of them on a shelf along the side of the gallery, maybe about 75, I think. Um, and, and a lot of sculptures, uh, many in bronze and... and uh, some in, in terracotta. Uh, what did you guys make of it? I had a very good time. Yeah, you were, you were enthusiastic, Brian. You were, you, yeah. were, you were in heaven there. I mean, without any consideration of, uh, you know, where he was coming from, where he, where he wanted to go, the, the, the just the sheer formal variety and the, the like the quick variations and the quick improvisations and um, how much he would make of a little and you know how deftly he would you know the make something big of little forms and and the uh, you know gouge out these eloquent uh, you know affecting voids and that the, the, the kind of uh, scratching and gouging all together is just, you know, for for an artist, it's just sort of, you know, liberating, and infectious uh, um, encouragement. Karen? Well, I wish there had been more editing in the installation. I mean, I just felt exhausted as I <clears throat> went along looking at these little pieces. And I, I found I couldn't see them anymore. I just could not take in any more of these small variations. Um, I really hated those big heads in the back room, uh, which seemed to me inert and arty. And, uh, a lot of it looked like art, uh, which for me is not a good thing. <laughs> um, I was... Uh, not interested in in the very frontal pieces, the the ones that were uh, freestanding, but but made like the reliefs in many ways. I think the most interesting pieces were the small improvisatory ones, but uh, they were just for me impossible to see. I mean, I went in the other room and I looked away and I came back and I still just couldn't do it. Yeah, they're very difficult to see, partly, I think, because they're, they're almost, nearly all of them, almost black. Uh, and so, they're, 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 you know, the, the light just doesn't come off them, and it's very difficult to, to actually 
uh, I, you know, um, Brandt was looking at them through his camera, and they seemed to be a lot more alive through yeah. the camera. Yeah, they were looking at the video there more a lot. I think they could have been higher. I think looking down at them was not a good idea. Yes, that's a good point. I think that's right. I think they could have been more at eye level. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back with my wheelchair and a magnifying glass. <laughs> <laughs> But, but, but again, you know, most of the work is up against the wall. There mm -hmm. are some pieces that are, in, in, you know, you can really walk around. Um, but but f I guess for want of space, a, a lot of the work is on shelves, some of it very high up uh, in the back room. Um, so, you know, you're either looking down or up. Um, and... and uh, yeah, well, Jock. Well, I, uh, I I got a kick out of the show for sure, um, and I like the heads. All right, I liking disliking is uh, I I don't really know what, or I'm not sure that's a useful way of talking about them. But um, the heads, uh, they they are crude. Uh, but there's a uh, uh, a relationship between the the structure, the bones, and the flesh, and the sense in which the flesh seems to be sort of falling off of the bones, or uh, that fascinated me, uh, and and it fascinated me particularly because. Uh, we got a co or sculpture forum got a comment from um, from a woman named Amanda Bryan, I think, uh, and a comment about the the uh, Tuttle forum, and she suggested that um, uh, somebody or we should have uh, brought in Bacon, Francis Bacon, and uh, and we should read. Uh, uh, the book on Bacon, by written by Gilles Deleuze. Does has anybody read that? No, no, no. Okay, I picked it up uh, obediently, <laughs> and uh, and and in the course of, of the book, or, you know, I haven't read it uh, completely. It's a difficult book, the difficult writing, and um, constant reference to particular paintings and no illustrations in the book. Uh, but it's uh, some of his ideas seem interesting, and one of them is uh, about a kind of animal spirit uh, uh, being part of uh, Bacon's heads, or being part of his uh, all of his work, and that uh, that animal spirit, and then you know, sort of don't ask me what an animal spirit is, don't even ask me what a spirit is. But. There's a whole book about that that just came out, about the umwelt of how animals perceive the world. There's okay. been a lot of reviews of it. Okay. Well, there's a, another book to read. But the, <laughs> but the, the, uh, the sense in which the skeleton might be a spatial structure and, uh, and the flesh um, uh, sagging and and um, uh, sort of losing structure, but containing a spirit, and uh, that fascinated me. In and I connected uh, the uh, the heads with um, uh, with Bruce Gagne's heads in that respect, uh, and. And not with Jonathan Silver's heads, which we've been looking at, and uh, uh, it, it's there's just uh, uh, something uh, something going on here that I have difficulty obviously articulating, but I I, I did get a big kick out of those uh, out of those heads. I'm really startled by how much better these things look 
in the video than they did in person. It's so often the case, Karen. Um, yeah. I think that, that we were just talking about uh, Celeste uh, Cabrera's work, and, uh, and again, I was looking at the video of those things, struck mm -hmm. by how, how much how, how, how they looked so much better in the video. I, I, I saw the, as I said, I saw this show twice. The first time I went in the gallery, I felt overwhelmed um, and couldn't really uh, take in the, the exhibition you know, as, as a kind of total and uh, the complexity of it all, and found myself finding one or two things that I felt engaged by and really just looking at those and then leaving. Um, second time I went in, I was able to kind of look at everything and, and, and begin to form some ideas of, of, in general about, about it. And, and uh, I, you know, there was this... Um, Gosh, what what is it? This yearning, this this need, this desire for some kind of primitivism, some kind of uh, you know uh, escape from uh, contemporary civilization that that seems to to me to underpin much of the work and and well in general to underpin the work and and that 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 often seems to be a motivation for for a certain kind of artist. Um, and I wonder about it, and 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 I I don't particularly enjoy it, and and you know, um, so there was a kind of sense in which the work felt irrelevant, you know, to to to, to me, looking at it now, uh, and that was partly fired by my sense that the guy wasn't fundamentally a, a sculptor; he he, he he was an image maker. Mm -hmm. um, and he chose to, to work in three dimensions at some point rather than paint. Um, you know, uh, I did find a, a slightly different response to the heads that Jock is so interested in in the back room because they did at least begin to feel like, you know, lumps of stuff that, that were, uh, you know, ha had an existence as object as well as image. Um, uh, but for the most part, uh, you know, there were exceptions. Um, but I didn't, I didn't really, you know. I, I mean, it's it, it, in some ways inspiring work because there's so much energy there, uh, and and, uh, and 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 as Brandt indicated, a kind of liberation of, of some kind, as if as if once you stop painting and started making sculpture. Or working three-dimensionally, he he felt liberated in a way that, that perhaps he felt constrained when he was painting. I'm not, you know. Anyway, that that I'll leave it there for the moment. Yeah, and you remind me that um, Sidney Geist used to talk about him himself about Sidney as a Neolithic sculptor, and you know he mm -hmm. proudly asserted himself as someone who worked in stone and wood and clay and, not, you know, hated steel. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, and, and, and he, Sidney talked about wishing he could wake up in a cave. Uh, <laughs> in, in, and, and it's kind of interesting, you know, maybe we're close to the end of the world here, you know, run out of water and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, but that, that doesn't disturb me, uh, though the primitiveness, uh, I, you know, look, we're looking at something that's sort of vaguely uh, uh, pre-Columbian. Uh, and uh, I, I went home and sort of looked up some uh, pre-Columbian work. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, the pre-Columbian stuff that I happened to find in a book, uh, it was very, uh, I don't know, very sophisticated, very uncrude, mm -hmm. and and the crudeness of uh, the work that we uh, saw is, and I'm trying to figure that out, and and I think there's a, and and even thinking about uh, his work in comparison to Sydney's, uh, there's a. Uh, a confusion in tone, I, and I, I've sent some friends to see the show, and and they've come back about 
talking about his lightheartedness and so on. And the actual images are, uh, are often there's this subject matter seems not to be very lighthearted, and yet it reads as lighthearted. And um, and well, it's 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 complicated. I, I mean, we're looking at the heads now, they, and they're they're not sort of. Um, uh, glibly expressionistic uh, and the sort of architecture that's inserted into the these heads is um, it's I, I just don't see this structure you keep talking about it all seems on the surface as as Garth says they're images they don't they don't feel very sculptural to me well it, but uh, with with it's these almost kind of Basquiat this kind of doodling, yeah. no, that, that's the thing about the. It's not Basquiat. It mm. seems to me. It, it and it's hard to see in in this video. I because uh, you can't feel the the clay sort of almost slipping. Yeah. And it's he's starting with a hollow piece and and it goes in here and it comes out there. It's uh, they, these things are. But I don't mean Basquiat in a pejorative sense. It's they're highly volumetric and massive. The heads. I, I kind of didn't get it the first glance, and I began to realize I was missing out on something. I spent a lot of time there yesterday afternoon, more time than I wanted to, because I knew we were doing this today. <laughs> and um, I mean, the few paintings there uh, seemed to me very much. You know, made made sense of the fact that he was coming out of this uh, California uh, Sequeiros influenced mural tradition. There also seemed to be a lot of awareness of Picasso, like everybody else. And I started thinking about all those uh, weirdly expressionistic uh, things that Picasso himself did, and came and things that came out of Picasso. You know, the crowing cock with the pointed everything, and, and it seemed to me that this, uh, these were very much in, in that spirit of this uh, slightly hysterical expressionism. Uh, yeah, but it was subdued by, I mean, just that is a little, it, it's almost architectural. Uh, and, and Not as I understand architecture, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it, but, and, and my understand, but just these horizontals and verticals, yeah, yeah. brick-like. But I find that makes for a very dull sculpture, stacking one thing on top of the other that way. Yeah, it, oh. but he, he, it interferes with uh, uh, a facile expressionism is... Um, I don't know how facile it is. It's not easy to make everything that spiky, <laughs> uh -huh. especially if you're working in three dimensions. <laughs> it, it made me really kind of think about uh, uh, so-called cultural imperialism and the kind of this pack rat sensibility. And, and much as I love it, kind of think uh, twice and critically about the museum without walls. And I, and I, Kind of, I was reminded of, um, you know, Voltaire's rejoinder to Rousseau saying, uh, you know, what do we, we all got to get down on all fours now, like, you know, play at this kind of primitive life and primitive virtue. But, um, uh, and, and so I, I was thinking about it in the, you know, 40s, 50s, this wave of, you know, whitey artists all over the developed world kind of putting on feathers and making, you know, making totems and, uh, you know, playing at a, uh, you know, kind of primitive interior world. But I think ultimately, the, 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 the play the, is, that's a great thing. And, mm -hmm. and to have this wide acquaintance and just like put it all up in the air at once, really, that's what we're all aiming for worldwide. So I, I have to take it, you know, seriously and playfully at, at once. Well, you have to take it seriously because this was a very fundamental obsession in in the even going back to the 30s. If if you look at the 
magazines, if you look at the exhibitions, there's this uh, idea of the seamlessness of um, Western art and uh, the art of what used to be called primitive cultures. And uh, there was this uh, combination of modernism and a kind of uh, archaic, uh, mythic, um, what is the word I want? I mean, this is, this is when The Golden Bough is published in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And every artist that I've done any work on had a copy of that. <laughs> and the idea that uh, there are these uh, fundamental, mythic, symbolic ideas that transcend time and transcend cultures and that, that link us all. I mean, the, the collective unconscious, in other words. And I think this is part of it. So you have to take it seriously. But, he's, but I have the feeling that he's really doing it. Like, not, not just doing something that's a smart thing to do, but he's actually forgotten himself and just, like, you know, uh, I don't, been I swept don't along. Any, I, I, don't, I don't think any of this was, was uh, seen as the smart thing to do. I think it was a very uh, a fundamental assumption. Like the idea that the artist's role was not to replicate what was seen, but to, sh to show us what we couldn't see. That wasn't done as the smart thing. It was a real belief. Well, I, think, I think that we're sort of forgetting it, uh, how much of a popular wave, how much of a smart thing to do it was, because we're aware of the best of those things, like the bourgeois totems and the mm -hmm. Smith totem stuff. They they do something in the air, and they do some do it with you know such personal energy and verve that it's real. But um, if we had to look at a survey of all the fucking totems oh, yeah. and oh, yeah. of the forties, fifties, oh my god. Uh, well, it's like all the de Kooning wannabes in the 50s. Yeah. And I was reminded of de Kooning here, the, the sort of Villanor Venusness of the, the, the um, de Kooning women, mm -hmm. being this kind of stack of pouchy forms. It somehow works much better in paint for me. Well, it works better with de Kooning. Uh, well, yes, that too. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, the the um, slightly hysterical, what was it, kind of slightly hysterical expressionism. expressionism. I think, I think is good, is good. And I, I, you know, I mean that that I couldn't make up my mind whether the guy is, as you seem to think, Brandt, kind of just liberated and and and. and Enjoying uh, the liberation and and uh, the kind of sense of um, uh, uninhibited, unselfconscious kind of invention um, that I think you found, uh, particularly in in that uh, series of very small things, which are are inventive, but um, you know they, they they often feel like trinkets. They often feel unbalanced. They don't have any. You know, if one were to make them larger, they would not stand up. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that I think he was so liberated and so uninhibited, in, uninhibited. And uh, you know, there's this um, constant scratching of the surface. There's hardly a surface there that is not somehow or other um, worked over with with some kind of knife or tool and scratched and uh, and and scarred is the word I'm looking for. Um, why, why does that bother you? Because it was so consistent and so persistent and so uh, unvaried often. Uh, it, it, it seemed to be uh, the, the guy couldn't tolerate a surface that was anywhere near smooth. Um, uh, and, and it often, uh, you know, serves to disguise the form. Um, 
and and uh, that's why it puzzled me. Um, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I'm not trying to, I, I endorse it wholeheartedly, uh, but I do feel him touching and feeling and holding the forms, and I, there was a stretch where he. Um, uh, it, he, he, I don't know, he sort of started out painting and then got into trouble financially or something and had to move to a farm and farm, actually raise animals and, and stuff before he went back to, um, back to the city, New York City and, and art. And that engagement with animals um, and you know, physical engagement with animals um, is is something that's that's part of his work, it seems to me, uh, and getting his hands in the mud of the farm or the mud of his uh, uh, his studio. Uh, that physical involvement it was with something that's real. Uh, um. I you see that, that this is where I don't feel it. Um. I don't, I, you know, th that is, um, you know, I mentioned, um, I mentioned uh, Julian Jagger, uh, and, you know, th there is someone who was you know, embedded in the physical world, uh, you know, in, in a way that very few of us are anymore. Um, and I didn't feel that this work came out of that kind of, um, you know, experience of being embedded in the physical world, in, 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 in you know, in, as you say, Jack, in the in the earth and the animals and the, you know, the materiality, the sheer kind of. Uh, yeah, there's it, no obvious connection, but you're you're connecting her with or connecting. I'm not connecting her at all. I'm yeah, not, yeah, I'm, but you you mentioned her. I mentioned her because yeah. because I think in some ways this work, in relation to what what I felt with her work, um, like it or dislike it, yeah. this work is intellectual compared to her work. Okay. Well, uh, to some, you know, they're different, but I th I do think that that's uh, a, a sort of real connection. Uh, um. Yeah, well, uh, I'm glad you do. I, I, I was interested in what you were saying about the relentless attacking of the surface, Garth, because one of the few pieces that I kept going back to was the terracotta piece in the front room, which is quite smooth. Yeah. And I, it's one of the few where I got interested in what was happening with the forms in relation to each other, yeah. rather than being stopped by all this um, yeah, uh, I, uh, that was uh, happening on the outside. On my first visit, that was one of the pieces I found myself spending time with. And there's a piece in, in, in the back room, uh, in, in the corner, that, that is a one-sided piece, actually. I mean, you look mm -hmm. behind it and it's actually just frontal um, that I, I found myself spending time with as well. It's the one in the corner. I, I think I know the one you mean. Yeah. Yeah, so we have a difference of opinion here. I mean, I think um, Jock, enthusiastic, Prance, enthusiastic. And again, Karen and I are somewhat guarded in our response. <laughs> Modified raptures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess, I, I guess, I'm just resistant to a certain kind of, of uh, you know, uh, work that seems to want to drag me um, back to a, another age. Like and Voltaire and Rousseau. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, that's it. I just, I don't, I don't see that. Uh, I, I said, you know, the heads seem very contemporary to me. Look, look, look at that table that that piece is on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I mean, you, tell me about that. 
what you know what can one say about something like that that you know is is so uh, crappily put together uh, to, but self-consciously crappily put yeah together. i mean what's the point you know why not put the thing on a decent if you want it on a on a you know table, on a on table or you know make something that yeah but that's a Curator's decision. No, no, I, no, 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 I think that, 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 that's not that part of the piece. Estate. I thought it was supposed to be I a think, crib I, or I'm something. I'm sure that's his own. Yeah, table. I'm sure yeah. it is too. Yeah, I'm sure it is too. And it's supposed to be a sort of cradle or something. Yeah, it's not know. a stand yeah. or a birthing bed. But <laughs> some well, kind it, of it's, jaguar woman. It, it, it's a lot of hands. Poles what he happened to have <laughs> in his studio, and the curators are, you know, not going to disturb that. Yeah, uh, and but it's yeah, but doesn't he doesn't bother yeah, but it's me. It's the artist's decision to make a table like that. Yes. Yeah, I, but it, he made the decision uh, in the midst of telephone calls and all that kind oh, of stuff. And oh, give oh, yeah, oh, me it. No, I, I, I'm serious. It, it, you know, he's focused on the clay thing. And he needs a place to store it. And you don't make a no, no, table no, no, like no. that by accident. He made uh -huh. he made the tables part of the sculpture, as, you know, because he felt the sculpture needed a bed uh, for whatever yeah. reason. R right, sure. And, and 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 so this is the bed he made. Uh, uh -huh. And and he could have made any kind of bed, you know. Well, uh, if he had time and interest. <laughs> Uh-huh. Well, you know, I mean... Yeah, and, and, you know, he didn't paint the walls of his studio yellow, I bet. Uh, no, I bet he didn't. Yeah. Um, you know, some hotshot designers are credited in the press release. Well, they had a job to do, didn't they? To yeah. cram, cram so much work yeah. in, the, yeah. in that gallery and not make it feel, uh, you know, impossible to see. I think it is impossible to see. <laughs> it probably is a, a bit like uh, the condition of the estate or the studio or something like that, with things at various heights and. Uh, but you know that might be easier to see because you wouldn't be so aware of how designed it all was. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think um, I think we'll leave it there unless somebody's got some more to say. I think we all have more to say, but I think we'll. Leave it there. <laughs>